Shalom, 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 shalom. First, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakal, Kodash, Tawada, and double honors to the elders of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. And salutations to all the righteous brothers on the highways and byways that are bringing out this word in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakal, Kodash, Tawada. As I said before, They've, um, YouTube have blocked me from uploading or doing any live videos on my regular channel that I normally use, um, Hebrew Israelite Yochanan, my channel that I broadcast all of my live edifications and teachings in feeding the flock and the elect of Israel. So they blocked me for a week. So I've got another channel that's called Judah Israel, Judah Israel, which I use. Now, for the time being, I'm going to be using that channel for the next seven days to broadcast my videos, some live, some I'm going to upload, and then what I'll do, I'll bring them over onto my other channel once YouTube, once the devil, Esau, gives me access back to my YouTube channel where I can upload my videos and go back live again. So for the time being, I'm using my backup channel, which is called Judah Israel. And when I get access back to my normal channel, I'll leave a, a link to that so that you know where I am. If you don't see me on my live channel, if you don't see me for a few days and you know something's up. Yeah, that's all I can say. So, without further ado, today's edification is called The Saints of the Most High Shall Take the Kingdom. The Saints of the Most High Shall Take the Kingdom. Now, who are the Saints of the Most High? The Saints of the Most High are the 12 tribes of Israel. The saints of the Most High are Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Natali, Asher, Issachar. Your so-called African Americans, so-called West Indians, so-called Haitians, so-called Dominicans, so-called from Guatemala to Panama, so-called Puerto Ricans, your so-called Cubans, your so-called North American Indians, your so-called Seminole Indians, the so-called indigenous people of Argentina and Chile, the so-called indigenous people of Colombia, and you're a guy, and you're so-called Mexicans. Those are the saints of the Most High. Now, as I say, and I always say, Israel, this nation of people here that you've seen on the screen, are also mixed amongst some of the other nations. This is why when the Lord comes to gather the saints of the Most High, which are the elect of Israel, He's coming to gather them from the four corners of the world. Because Israel are scattered amongst the other nations. So these people you see on the screen here, this is the foundation of the house of Israel. This is the core of the house of Israel. But they are also scattered amongst the other nations. Why? Because of the transatlantic slave trade. Because of 70 AD, when Jerusalem was taken down by Vespasian and his son, um, General Titus, Israelites had fled up into Europe as well as over a million and a half Israelites had fled to the west coast of Africa. So this is the foundation and the core of the children of Israel. These nations that you see here on the screen. But Israelites are also scattered and mixed amongst other nations. And I've said this time and time before. Some Israelites will look like the other nations. Some will look like Caucasians. Some will look like Japanese, some Israelites will look like East Indians, some will look Arabic, because we are scattered and mixed amongst the other nations. But this is the house of Israel. This is, these are the saints of the Most High. And the saints of the Most High can only be the children of Israel. The saints of the Most High cannot come from any other nation on this earth. The saints of the Most High, the Most High can't come from Edom, Esau, Edom, the Edomites. The saints of the Most High can't come from Ishmael, can't come from Hamites. Can't come from the Chinese, which are Moabites. Can't come from the Japanese, which are the Ammonites. All right? Can't come from any of these other nations unless they descend from the 12 tribes and they look like these nations because they have lived amongst them and they've, been, they've mixed amongst them. Because remember, it's all to do with your father's lineage, your father's lineage. So if your father had gone and taken on a Chinese woman and married her and had children, then those children are Israelites. And if his sons, when they grew up, went and married a, a Chinese woman again, then those kids are Israelites. It's all to do with the seed of the house of Israel on the father's side. Not on the mother's side, on the father's side. So that's how Israel 
is scattered amongst the other nations is because of the transatlantic slave trade. It's because when they took the Native American Indians and put them on slave ships, and Esau brought them to his empires around the world to work as slaves. It's because of the scattering of 70 AD. So just know that. But this is the house. The saints of the Most High can't be from any other nation. They have to descend from one of the 12 tribes of Israel on their father's side. So when Daniel speaks about the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, that's the kingdom that we have now. The world that we live in now is Esau's world. This is Edom's world. The world that we're living in today belongs to the so-called white man. The so-called white man, the Caucasian, the European, the AKA Europeans, the different names that they give themselves, they are all Edomites unless they descend from another nation. The so-called white man, Esau, Edom, the Edomites, they run the world. They rule the world. They make the laws, they change the laws, they make the rules, they change the rules. They rule this world. They control everything. They control the financial institutions. They control the military institutions. They control the space institutions. They control all of the world organizations. They control the United Nations. The so-called white man rules the world. They control the corporations, the business. The business, the international language of business is English. Which is a bastard language, but which is the white man's language. For you to become a pilot and fly and airlines, whether it's um, British Airways, um, Air China, Qatar Airlines, Iranian Airlines, you have to learn English. You cannot fly a 747 jet for any airlines unless you know and learn English, because English is the international language of the world. So once again, the kingdom that we're living in today is the so-called white man's kingdom, Esau Edom, the Edomites kingdom. So I say, today's edification is called what? The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Shall take the kingdom. And the saints of the Most High, who you see on the screen right now, the 12 tribes of Israel. So without further ado, let's go into scripture. We're going to go into the book of Daniel. We're going to bring this... We're going to bring this to life, what Daniel spoke of, right? We're going to bring this to life, the book of Daniel, chapter 7, I think I've got it up here already. Yes, so let's, we're good to go. So, Daniel said here, Daniel chapter 7, verse 15, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Those were the visions that he had of the four beasts that represented the four empires, all right? The first beast represented the, um, the Neo-Babylonian Empire. The second beast represented the Persian and the Medes Empire. The third beast represented the Greek Empire. And the fourth beast represented the Roman Empire. All right? So this is what Daniel was speaking of. We're not going to go back to the beginning of Daniel chapter 7 to go through that. But this is what this is the vision that he had that troubled him in his head. So Daniel says here, I came... I came near unto one of them that stood by me and asked him the truth of all of this. Who did he come near to? One of the angels that revealed this vision to Daniel. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of these things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth, which are the four empires that I just spoke about. The Neo-Babylonian, the Persian and the Medes, the Greek and the Romans. All right? But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now, I say again, this is the saints of the Most High here, the 12 tribes of Israel. Those people who descend from the transatlantic slave trade and who are scattered to the four corners of the world and now are mixed amongst the other nations. Those people that are called Native American Indians of North and South America and Canada, the West Indies, today who they call Latinos, Hispanics and Mexicans and Puerto Ricans, who are also scattered to the four corners of the world during the transatlantic slave trade. 
Those are the saints of the Most High. No other nation can become a saint of the Most High. And the Most High is only coming to deliver the elect out of those saints. Out of the house of Israel, the people that he's coming to deliver to take this kingdom from Esau, Eden, the so-called white man, are going to be the elect, which represent the 144,000 in the book of Revelation chapter 7, and the one-third, the mixed multitude. The mixed multitude represents the nation of Israel that are scattered to the four corners of the world and that have been mixed amongst the other nations for centuries and look like these other nations but are not of these other nations. Like I said before, some will look European, some will look Chinese, but they are not Chinese, they're not European, they descend from one of these 12 tribes. But because of this, this, the diaspora, the spreading and the mixing that Esau done purposely, some Israelites will look like these other nations, but this is who the 12 tribes of Israel are. The Native American Indian tribes of North and South America and Canada and the West Indies and those who descend from the transatlantic slave trades. This is the house of Israel. So these are the saints, but the Most High is only sending his son to deliver the elect of the saints. Revelation chapter 7 will tell you who that is. So let's go back. So it says here, it says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth, which are the four empires. But the saints of the Most High, which are the twelve tribes of Israel, shall take the kingdom, which are the elect, and possess the kingdom forever and ever, even forever and ever. Now, we'll go to a precept here in the, the book of Second Ezra. Confirms that this is going to take place. Chapter 6, I want, I believe. Start from verse 8. And he said unto me, from Abraham, this is Ezra, who was speaking to the, who, where the angel came to him in a vision, in a deep sleep. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. All right? Because remember, Jacob and Esau are paternal twins. They're not identical twins. They are paternal twins. Same mother and father, same womb, but complete different characteristics and com look completely different. There was nothing identical about them, not from their skin color to their character. For Esau which is the so-called white man. Esau is the forefather of the people today that we call Europeans or Caucasians or so-called white people. This is their forefather. For Esau is the end of the world. This is the kingdom that the saints have come to take down. So the angel has told Ezra this as well, that Esau, the so-called white man, is going to be the end of the world, which means the end of the age, the end of his rulership. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followers. Now, who is Jacob? Jacob are the 12 tribes of Israel. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Natali, Asher, Issachar, the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So Esau, as the scripture says, Esau is the end of the world. This is the kingdom that the saints of the Messiah are going to take down when the Lord, our Lord, Yahushai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, comes back to deliver the elect, the elect of the house of Israel, which are going to be the saints. And Jacob, which is the 12 tribes, is the beginning of it that's full of it. So this is what Daniel is speaking of here, what's going to take place. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom. What kingdom is that? That's Esau's kingdom. That's the so-called white man's kingdom that we're, that we're living in today. We are living in a white man's world. Even forever and ever. That's why Ezra says Esau is the end of the world. Because his rulership, his, his power status, his position in this world is going to go from being at the very top to being at the bottom of the bottom. Remember what the scripture says in Revelation chapter 13. He who he leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Esau in the Edomites are going to go into hard 
core slavery in this new kingdom that's coming. That the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is coming to deliver alongside Michael and the Archangels and alongside the saints of the Most High. It says, then would, I have, then would I know the truth of the fourth beast. The fourth beast is the Roman Empire. Today, the whole global system is the reincarnation of the Roman Empire. We are living in the reincarnation of the Roman Empire because the Romans are here today in the reincarnation. That whole system is in place that's been put in place by the so-called white man who are the Edomites in the Bible. This is the system that we live under now. The greatest superpower in the world, America, shows you that to your face, the system. Their president is like an emperor, and then they have the Senate. The Senate is the same thing that they had in ancient Roman times. They had a Senate in ancient Roman times, we have a Senate today. In England, we call them members of parliament or house of parliament. All the countries around the world have some sort of parliament or Senate, or Senate system, all based on the ancient Roman Empire. So the fourth beast is the Roman Empire, right? which was diverse from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, which was his strength. Same thing that Esau has today, because it's the reincarnation of the Roman Empire. His strength is his teeth. His teeth, his iron teeth, is his army, his military. No one can take down this white man's military. And remember, whether it's the Russians or the European allies or the Americans, they are all Edomites that have an iron teeth that have a military that cannot be taken down by the other nations. And his nails of brass, which devoured, this talked about their strength, break in pieces, stamp the, stamp the residue with his feet. This is what the Roman Empire did to take down the Greeks and what they did to take down all of the other tribes and nations that they conquered, the Gauls, the Franks, Germana Minor, Germana Major, this is what they did. The Celtics. So it says, and the ten horns that were in his head, all right, and of the others which came up, and before whom three fell. The ten horns represents the European Union. The ten nations that originally formed the European Union. Because remember, the today's Beast is the reincarnation of the fourth beast that Daniel had the vision of. Today's society, today's kingdom, rules and regulations and world organizations are all based on the, realm, the Roman Empire. The ten horns represent the ten countries that originally came together to start the European Union. But then it was called the ECC. Right? And of which came up, it was called the Treaty of Rome. Right, it started off as seven and then it developed into ten. That's the ten horns. And of which came up and before whom three fell. Right, so of which came up and before whom three fell. Before whom that three fell represents the three empires. The Spanish Empire. The British Empire. And the French Empire. So before the European Union became one. With the Treaty of Rome. And then the ECC Council, before that, three fell. The three that fell before that were the three empires. The British Empire, the Spanish Empire, and the French Empire. Because they was always at war with each other, these three empires. It says, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. Right? I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. The horn that made war with the saints is the United States of America. This is the one whose look was more stout than his fellows, because America came out of Europe. Remember, Britain, which is the 13 colonies, gave birth to America. Until the Ancient of Days came, the Ancient of Days is the Most High, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. The saints of the Most High are the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So this time is coming. This is what we're heading to. The time that these people here on this screen are going to possess the whole kingdom of earth. That these people are here are going to be given their spiritual powers, immortality, and going to rule alongside our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world 
ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, with all of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Ariel, Raphael, they're going to take down these nations when the Lord comes. But before that happens, before that takes place, two major prophecies have to come to play. One is the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip, the microchipping of the, 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 the people on a global scale. And the second is the starting of World War III. All right? The nuclear war must be in play. World War III must be in play before the Lord comes to deliver the 144,000, before he comes to deliver the saints of the Most High, which are going to make up the elect. The saints will be the elect of the house of Israel. The elect means chosen. The chosen. There's only one third of these people that live all throughout the world are going to make it during the judgment. Only one third of these people here are going to make up the house of Israel that are going to take down this kingdom of Esau. That's going to take down this white man and all the other nations that have allied with him. All the other heathen nations that have allied alongside the so-called white man are going to be taken down. So the Arabs, the Hamites, the Africans, the Chinese, the Japanese, they're all going to be taken down. The Iranians, all of these nations whether the Russians, they're all going to be taken down by the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Michael, Gabriel, Ariel, the legions of angels, the 144,000, which are the saints of the Most High, and the men of the house of Israel. They're all going to be, they're going to take down these nations with the Lord. And that's going to happen when the Lord comes to deliver these people during World War III, which the Bible prophesizes about over and over again. Right, the great war of Armageddon. That's when the Lord is coming. So it says here, Thus he says that the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So we are living now in that time of the reincarnation of that fourth beast that has devoured the whole earth, and that is diverse from all the other kingdoms. Because all the nations want to be like America. And it's, the, it's what they call the American democracy, which is what they use their military, their teeth, their iron teeth, to impose on every nation around the world. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. The ten horns, I said again, represent the European Union. They started off as the Treaty of Rome, the seven nations, that, that grew to ten. And they became the ECC, the European Something Council, the European Community Council. So the Ten Horns are, represents the European Union. Today, they represent 28 members. But when they started, they represented seven, which was the Treaty of Rome, which grew to 10 and stayed at 10 for a very long time before they increased. But this is a representation of the European Union, the Ten Horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings right the three kings that he subdued are the three kingdoms the British Empire the Spanish Empire and the French Empire that's what America did America subdued all of those America subdued the British Empire during the War of Independence they subdued the Spanish Empire before they, they subdued the British Empire to take control of America and most of the West Indies. And then after they subdued this, the, the, um, the British Empire, they subdued the French Empire. They broke ties with the French. So it says, he shall be diverse from the first. It says, another shall arise after them. That's America. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. That's what America did. It subdued those three nations. And America became the superpower, became the empire. It's called America imperialism. They are the empire today. There's no longer a British empire. There's no longer a French empire. And there's definitely no longer a Spanish empire. Because America has swallowed them all up in whole in it becoming the, the empire today. American imperialism rules the world today. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And that's what he did. 
He thinks he's a God. He took the children of Israel. When he says, he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, he wore out the saints of the Most High. That's what Esau did. That's what America did. That's what these Edomites did. They took down the African, they took down the Native American Indian tribes and renamed them and called them Guatemalans and Panamanians and called them Puerto Ricans and called them Cubans. They called the, the they called the the, the 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 Southern Kingdom. They called the Gadites. They said they're North, they called the North American Indians. They called the Reubenites. They said they're Seminole Indians. That's what they did. They gave them names. Argentinians and the tribe of Natali, they called them Argentinians and Chileans. That's what these Europeans did. Remember, this whole continent here, these people were taken down by Edomites. All came from Europe. They took these people, today what they call African Americans and West Indians, they took them and Haitians, they took them from the west coast of Africa. That's what these Europeans did. That's what the, the British did, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and brought them to the Americas as slaves to build their kingdom. So I say, always remember that those people that are in America today that call themselves Americans and all these different nations are from Europe. They took down the Native American Indian tribes. That's what they call them, the so-called Native American Indian tribes. And then they took the so-called African Americans, but the Caribbeans and Haitians from the West Coast of Africa and brought them to the Americas to build that kingdom. So they weared down the saints of the Messiah. They did, that's how they weared us down. And through all of their systems and in incarceration, this is what they did. This is what the so-called white man did. He spoke great words against the Most High because he believes he's a God. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And that's what he did. He wore us down to the ground. He did everything to destroy us as a people. Today you go to the Americas, the Native American Indians, are their, their whole system of people have been destroyed. The African Americans, the the Caribbeans, they're living in absolute poverty, the majority of our people. And they've also been destroyed by Esau Edom. So now, a lot of our people think like these Edomites. They want to be like them. They look up to them. Because they think they're a god. They want to marry to them because they think it's going to get them further in life. They, they look at these people like they're gods. Because of what they've done. They've destroyed the house of Israel. But that's what the Lord is coming to deliver. But only the elect, only those of us that are going to wake up to this truth. And to think to change times and laws, and that's what he's done. Change times and laws, that's what the so-called white man did. And they shall be given into his hands until a time and times until a divine of a time. So we were given into his hand, the saints of the Most High. The saints of the Most High were given into the hands of Esau. That's why they were able to come and take us on those slave ships. That's why they were able to come to the Americas, North and South America and Canada and the West Indies, and take down the natives and commit genocide, incarcerate, re-educate. That's what they did to destroy a people. And then they gave them names. But that time is coming to an end. Esau's time is coming to an end. The clock is ticking. It's near the midnight hour. And Esau Edom, when I say Esau Edom, the elites, the average day John Doe white person ain't got a clue what's going on. You'll have those Bible bashers that go to the church that understand that the mark of the beast is the RFID chip, but they still can't get around their head that these people here on the screen are the true children of Israel, are the Israelites, are the people of the Bible. They can't get around their head. Why? Because the so-called white man has committed the worst atrocities against these people. So for them to openly admit that those people that we enslaved those people that we committed genocide against, that we murdered, tortured, raped, incarcerated, those people that we used biological weapons against by infecting their blankets with um, smallpox to kill off the Native American Indian tribes. They can't get it around their head. This is why they can't face what they did in the Americas, the so-called white man and these Europeans. They can't talk about what they did because they would have to admit the things that they did, they did it to God's chosen people that is the gifs of all of this they took the knife out and 
decimated, surgically decimated God's chosen people, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. So that's why they can't admit to who these people are. But the elites know. The elites of Esau know who the children of Israel truly are. Know who the saints of the Most High are. You see, Esau thinks he can go and make anyone a saint. He thinks he can make his popes, his priests, his good charitable workers. And he goes, oh, we're going to make him a saint. We're going to make that person a saint. We're going to make that person. He thinks they, they can make, you can't be a saint. You can't be made a saint. The only way you can be considered a saint of, of the Most High, if you descend from one of these 12 tribes here, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Natali, Asher, Issachar. That's the only way. There's no ceremony that can make you a saint. There's no blood in that can make you a saint. You have to descend biologically from one of these 12 tribes and on your father's side. It has to be on the side of your father, not your mother, on your father's side. It's all to do with the seed. That's the only way, people. That's the only way. So it says here, but the judgment shall sit. So that judgment that's coming to Esau is going to sit. It can't, nothing can change that judgment. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. So the judgment has to sit. And they're going to take away Esau's dominion. And consume him and destroy him until the end. And it, and it we go back here again. For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is a so-called white man. His rulership is coming to an end. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows it. Why? Why did the angel tell Ezra that? Because the angels already told Daniel that. The judgment shall sit. Nothing can change what's coming. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom, listen carefully, and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So when it says the people, it's talking about a nation, to the people, to a certain people, who are considered the saints of the Most High. The kingdom and the dominion. So we know this is a future prophecy. And the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the saints, to the people of the saints of the Most High. Who are the people of the saints of the Most High? Right there. Nothing can stop that from happening. Nothing can stop that from happening. I say again, verse 27, and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. That's the people that you look at on the screen. Whose kingdom whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions, listen carefully, shall serve and obey him. All dominions, all the other nations, all the other people on this planet Earth, the people that are going to survive their destruction. Because remember, two thirds of the house of Israel are going to die during the destruction because they're not going to accept this truth. And also two thirds of the heathen nations are going to be destroyed during the destruction. That's why the scripture says the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those that are going to survive the destruction of the heathen nations, all of their dominions, all of the people, all of the nations, man, woman and child, shall serve and obey him. Who is him? Yahweh Shai and the nation of people that he's going to be king over. These are his people, the saints of the Most High. So all of the nations of the earth are going to serve these people here on the screen. The, those people that you call niggers, spicks, wetbacks, woks, monkeys, coons, baboons, um, what's the other, tomahawks, all these different names that you have for us. In this kingdom that's coming and this judgment that you are going to receive, Esau, Eden, you're going to serve all of these people here on the screen. You're going to go, all these other nations are going to go into captivity and become subservient to this nation here. This nation of people here are going to receive 
spiritual powers, immortality, rulership. They're going to have slaves. They're going to have servants. They're going to have concubines. They're going to rule every single nation upon this planet Earth. And they're going to rule them with a rod of iron. But they're going to rule them in righteousness. And they're going to rule them under the laws, commandments and statutes that was given to Moses by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So that's... So then it says, verse 20, 28 says, Here too is the end of the matter. This is the end of the matter. There's nothing changing this. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. So nothing can change what's coming. Nothing can change what's coming. So let's get a few precepts up. Um, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Verse 12. Now listen carefully. Now we just read here, right? When it says, And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is coming to earth. Remember, right? Yahweh is going to be the king of kings. David is going to be the king in Israel, in the promised land. Yahweh is going to be over him. You're going to have all of the prophets. Everyone's going to have their place. There's going to be an hierarchy. The 144,000 are going to have their statue, their crowns on their heads. And then you're going to have the, the ones below them, the rest of the, the one third of the men of the house of Israel. There's going to be a hierarchy. There's going to be a, a hierarchy in, the, in this kingdom that's coming. The kingdom that's come to earth. So Daniel says here, the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Why? Because Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow of it, right? But this kingdom that's coming is going to be ruled forever and ever and ever. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. So every nation that survives the destruction, that survives the almighty judgment. All of those that survive, that don't take the microchip, of all the other heathen nations, are going to be subservient and go into captivity under the house of Israel. You're going to serve us in this kingdom of heaven to come. There's not going to be no hugs and kisses and roses and all this white Jesus, hippie, blue-eyed and blonde hair bullshit that's coming. It's a dark-skinned man with woolly hair that's coming with legions of angels and with Michael his general. Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, all of the seven archangels and all the legions of angels, they're coming to take this nation down and to deliver the children of Israel, the saints of the Most High, and to put them in their rightful position and place of power and rulership. And to give them immortality and spiritual powers and wealth be beyond what anyone can imagine. So every nation that survives the destruction and the judgment is going to serve the children of Israel. And when their children are born and their grandchildren are born and their great-grandchildren and their great-grandchildren, when they're they're all going to serve the house of Israel. You're, you're going to serve the house of Israel for the rest of eternity. Just so you understand. Every single nation on this planet earth is going to serve the children of Israel. It's going to serve these people here for eternity. So your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, your children's 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 children are going to serve these people for eternity. After the judgment, after the war after the salvation, after the taking down of these nations. All right, just so you understand. So, Isaiah says here, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall what shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be what? Utterly wasted. So for anyone that's got any ideas about not serving the house of Israel, means they can start a rebellion and so forth. This is what the scripture says here. Any nation and kingdom 
Once the judgments come, once the taking down has come, once the rulership has come, that shall not serve thee, shall perish. They shall be utterly wasted. Now, let's go to Luke. Is it Luke 12 and 49, I think I want? Twelve forty to twelve forty-nine. Hold on, there's a precept here I'm thinking of. It's not twelve forty-nine. Uh, it's Luke. One second. Nineteen. Nineteen. Luke chapter nineteen. Let's quickly look at my Bible. When I open my Bible, I know where everything is. I give all praise to Tihar Bashim Yam Shai. Nineteen. Go to verse twenty-six. Hold on. So this is the Lord speaking, right, himself, right? If you don't want to listen to Isaiah, listen to what our Lord says, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? This is what he has to say about the matter, right? That's coming. For I say unto you, that unto every one which has shall be given, and from him that has not, even that he has shall be taken away from him, right? But those mine enemies, Esau, Edom, the Hamites, the Ishmaelites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, all these other nations, the Africans, the so-called white man, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs, the East Indians, the, the, the Malaysians, all these other nations. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, bring them to me, the Lord says, and slay them before me. You understand? He said, bring them hither. And slay them before me. Alright? So let's not get this twisted, right? Let's quick look at the word slay, right? Does it mean kiss them before me and hug them before me? Or give them roses? Slay them. To kill off. To slaughter. So that's the Lord himself is telling you that. For all those that are not going to... That's not going to play ball. All those that are going to try to become a resistance to this rulership that's coming. The Lord said, just kill them. Kill them. Just kill them. We ain't got no time to convince them. Just kill them, he says. And if you can, do it right before me. Kill them off. This is the Lord speaking. The man that white Christianity is telling you he's coming with hugs and kisses and roses and that anyone that believes in the Lord can receive salvation and all this ratate, -te, rata te all this bullshit. The Lord is only coming for his people. His people. He's only coming for his people, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. He ain't coming for any other nation. And he's only coming for the elect out of those people, the one third, the 144,000, the one third. He ain't coming for another nation. So he said, bring them here and kill them. He said, kill them off, slaughter them. That's, your, that's who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is what he's telling you. So, kill them off. So the Lord said, I say again, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, kill them before me. Simple as. So go back to Isaiah. Isaiah says here, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee, that will not serve the house of Israel, shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Utterly wasted. It says, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious, which is the house of Israel. All right. The sons also of them that afflicted thee, Esau, Edom, that's the main son of the heathen nation that afflicted the house of Israel. Then you've got the Ishmaelites, the Arabs. Then you'd have the Hamites, the Africans. It would be in that order. But top of the list is the so-called white man. 
who is known as the Edomites in the Bible, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall what shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee, all they that called you nigger, spick, walk, coon, monkey, wetback. Um, what's the other one? Tomahawk, all these different names they have for our people, all these different names they have for the Native American Indians, all different names they have for the Mexicans. All those that despised us, all those people that despise these people here. All those nations that despise the 12 tribes of Israel. This is that's going to go down. It says, All they that despise thee shall what? Shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee, because they're going to know who we are. The city of the Lord, the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been what? Forsaken and hated. That's what we are, right? We're forsaken and hated. So that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. And that's going to happen in the kingdom. And if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, oops, not 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 24. Verse 24. It says, Then cometh the end, all right, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom. Let's go up a verse, right? But every man in his own order, all right, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, the first fruits, afterwards they that are. Yahawashai is at his coming. Who are going to be Yahawashai is at his coming? The elect of these people. Only the elect. Not all of the house of Israel. Only the 144,000 and the one third. Because two thirds of these people are going to die during the destruction, during the judgment, during Jacob's trouble. Why? Because they refused to accept who they are and they went on to continue to be part and parcel and keeping going Esau's kingdom. They kept doing all of the defiled things that Esau taught them. So they kept on being, being homosexuals. They kept on eating defiled meats. They kept on worshipping white Jesus. They kept on worshipping Islam or Buddha or Hindu or Sikh. They kept on being part of the political system and voting in their system. They kept on keeping Esau's system going, legitimizing this demonic, satanic world that we live in today. They kept on legitimizing it by being part and parcel of it. By refusing to accept who they are, they refuse to come back to their true power, to their true God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls the Most High and Jesus. They refuse to come back to him and they stayed with white Jesus. They stayed with Islam. They stayed with the political systems, Democrat, Republican, Conservative, Labour. They stayed in the defiled foods. They stayed being homosexuals. They stayed committing adultery. They stayed doing all of the things, unlawful things, without at any stage trying to reach out to the Lord, trying to come back to the, to the Father and the Son because the Father and the Son only wants to hear from His people. And that's what the two-thirds of our people won't accept. They want everybody to be part of this thing. This book here, the Holy Bible, is only meant for the house of Israel. But it's going to be used to judge the nations and to rule the nations. So it says here, But every man in his own order, Yahawashai, the first fruits afterwards, they that are Yahawashai at his coming, which are the elect. Right? Then comes the end, when he shall what? Have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, which we just read about in the book of Daniel 7, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. He's coming to put down all rule. He's coming to put down the white man, put down the Chinese man. He's coming to put down the Arabs, the African nations, the Malaysians, the East Indians, the Pakistanis. He's coming to put down all of these nations, all of their rulers, all their authority and all their power. He's coming to put them down. 
And he's going to do that through his son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He's going to do that through Michael, the archangel, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, and all of the tens and tens of thousands of legions of angels that are going to be coming with the Lord. He's going to do that with the 144,000, right? The elect of the house of Israel. He's going to do that with the elect men of the house of Israel. Because the women won't be playing no part in taking down these nations. But the women will receive spiritual powers and immortality. And so will the children of the house of Israel. But it's the men, the elect, alongside Yahweh Shai and the angels that are going to take down these nations. And put down all rule and authority and power. For what? For he must reign. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. You understand? For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his seat. Right? And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Is death. Because you're going to receive immortality. For he has put all things under his seat, but when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, then shall the Son, which is Yahweh Shai, also himself be subject unto him. Who is that? Who is he going to be subject unto? Unto his Father. He's going to present the kingdom and say, Dad, I've done it. Got the rulership, got the elect, they've got the spiritual powers, got the immortality, and we've taken down all the nations. And the only person that the Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is going to be subject unto is to the Father, to the Most High, to Yahweh. Then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that the Most High may be all in all. It's going to be a beautiful day, boy. But this is going to happen. This is a future prophecy. And we know about the immortality. We just go to verse 50. It says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. How are we going to be changed? For this corruptible body that we have today must put on incorruption. And this mortal body that we have must put on immortality, people. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying that it's written, death is swallowed up in victory. Because the elect of Israel, the house of Israel, those that are going to receive salvation, are going to receive immortality. All of them, men, women and children, all going to receive immortality. Let's go to a couple more precepts. Second Timothy's chapter two. There's no escaping this. Verse eleven. It is a faithful saying: for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So if we die in this truth, we know, we pray through Yahabashim El Shai that we are going to be those that are going to be raised on the day of judgment. Those of us that are going to be raised to receive. Salvation from the dead, what we just read in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 50, that the dead also shall be raised with him. So if we die in this truth, we know we're going to be raised. When I say we know, we call ourselves the hopeful elect. We pray that we're going to make up the elect of those that are going to be raised. So when the Lord said, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, oops. when he says here, So when this corruptible shall have put an, okay, no, it says there, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, as the trumpet, as the, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Those dead that are going to be raised incorruptible, and shall all be changed, are those of us, all right, of the house of Israel, that make up the elect, the elect. So we go back to 2 Timothy, it says here, it is a faithful saying, which we just read, for if we be dead with him, if we die in this truth, people, 
we shall also live with him. If we suffer, if we suffer by preaching this word, this truth that we teach day in and day out, in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, we shall also reign with him. You understand? If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now, who are going to deny him? Two thirds. Two thirds of these people here on this screen are going to deny the Lord. Two thirds are going to deny the truth that we are teaching about the coming of our Lord, who we are, the judgment, the salvation. Two thirds are going to deny everything that's being taught here. Are going to stay inside those whorehouses, which are those churches that they call Catholic, Protestant, Seven Day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, Church of Latter Day Saints, Black Pentecostal Church. Two thirds are going to stay in those whorehouses. Worshipping white Jesus. Two thirds of our people are going to stay worshipping Islam and think they're Muslims. Two thirds are going to continue worshipping those other mad religions like Buddha, Sikh, Hindu. They're going to stay. They're going to die. They're going to deny who they are. They're going to deny this truth. They're going to deny that only Israelites can receive salvation. And they're, and they're, and they're going to deny that only the elect of the house of Israel are going to receive it on the day of judgment when the Lord Himself shows Himself. In those chariots, which the world ignorantly call UFOs, are the chariots of the Lord, the angels, when he comes to deliver the elect from the four corners of the world, right up until that point. So those that deny this truth, he also is going to deny them when he comes. When he comes to deliver, to make these people immortality, to make the elect of Israel immortal, incorruptible, to give them victory over death and spiritual powers, so we can say, O death, where is thy sting? Where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? When he comes to give them immortality, incorruptible body and spiritual powers, the two thirds that denied him are not going to be part of that. They're going to die. They're going to receive a terrible death during the judgment, during the war, or during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because we're at the beginning of Jacob's trouble. So, let's just, a couple more precepts. <laughs> oh, the spirit. Give all praise to you, by Shimi Shai. Because I was meant to do a lesson yesterday, but the spirit wasn't working with me yesterday, and I, and I, and I honestly admitted that. But I, this morning, before I went to bed last night, I said there was a lesson that I need to do today, which is to do the saints of the Most High. And believe me, I feel it. From the start of this lesson today, I feel the spirit on me today. Give all praises to you, by Shimi Shai. All praises. Because only through him that gives us the power to do this work. So it says there, Revelations 2 and 25, But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. What is that? That's this truth that we are teaching and continue to teach. Whether you want to hear, whether you want to forbear. You know, like I say, a lot of people look at us and think, Oh, we're racist, we're this, we're that, we're cultists, we're this. No, we are the saints of the Most High. We are the prophets of the Lord. We are the Lord's servants teaching you the truth of the Bible and the truth of who the true children of Israel are and the truth of who the, all the other nations are and the truth of what's to come. That's all we're doing. We're not preaching any violence. We're encouraging them to, 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 to commit any uprisings or any governments because we are telling you that hold that which that already you have, which is this truth. Hold it fast until he comes, until Yahweh Shai comes, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Because when he comes, that's when the hammer's going to go down. That's when he's going to come and deliver his elect. That's when you're going to receive, if we make up the elect of the house of Israel, your spiritual powers, your immortality. That's when you're going to receive your crowns. So we're going to hold fast, which is this truth. Keep teaching and preaching and learning until the Lord comes. We're not getting involved in no protests. We're not voting for no politician. We're not inciting no violence, no riots, no nothing. We don't want nothing to do with the carnal things of this world. That our people think they can do to deliver themselves. Everything we are doing is spiritual. And it's to the word, to the tune of the word that the, that the Bible speaks of. Of who those people are. Who are the people of the Bible? These are the people of the Bible. Who are the children of Israel? These are the children of Israel. Who are the Israelites? These are Israelites. It's not those people in Israel that call themselves Israelis or Jewish. Those are not the children of Israel. 
They never were and never will be. It's these people here that descend from the 12 tribes that went into captivity, that were taken down, that were captured, murdered, pillaged and raped, incarcerated, genocide. Those are God's chosen people. And those of them that were scattered to the other nations and are mixed amongst the other nations. And some of us will look like these other nations because of the scattering, the dispora and the mixing. But they ultimately go back to the 12 tribes. I just keep saying that. So it says, but that which you have already, hold fast till he come. To who? Till the Hawashai comes. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I, what? Will I give power over the nations. That, and that what we've been reading from the beginning. That the Lord is coming to give the kingdom, that the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. We've been reading, this is what this has all been about. Today's edification is called the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So John the Revelator says here, I want to say, <laughs> I always do that, John the Revelator, uh, because it's in the book of John. But it's Yahweh Shai speaking. This is the Lord speaking. This is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is him speaking. He is telling you this himself. I'm just passing the message on, teaching and preaching the message. The Lord said here, but that which you have already hold fast till I come, which is this truth, which are the scriptures. And he that overcometh all the things that Esau is going to bring upon us, the mark of the beast, he's going to try and vaccinate you. He's going to, he's going to come down with his martial laws. He's going to restrict your movement. He's going to ignite World War Three. All these things that Esau does is going to do we got to turn and pray to our Lord and say, Yahweh Shai, that he shall help us overcome all of these things. Don't look to your politician. Look to the Lord. To Yahweh Shai. Prayer. Prayer. Just always remember prayer. The most powerful is tool. Sometimes we forget that. It's the most powerful tool at our disposal. Is prayer to our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So he that overcometh and keepeth my works... His works are written in the scriptures. He's telling us what it is he wants us to do. He wants us to stop eating these defiled foods. He, he wants us to stop being homosexuals, lesbians. He wants us to stop worshipping these other religions. Sikh, Hindu, Muslim. He wants us to get out of these white Jesus Christ churches that are preaching white Jesus Christ and all these different whorehouses that call themselves churches. He wants us to, to, to stop voting for these politicians and to come out of their political system. He wants you to come back to the teachings of the Bibles to the best of your ability. And he that keepeth my works unto the end, people, to him will I give power over the nations. Once again. And he shall what? He shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father. You understand? We're going to rule the nations with a rod of iron, but in righteousness. And I will give him the morning star. Who is the morning star? That's Yahweh Shai. He's going to be our leader. Under him, King David. They're going to be sitting on their thrones in the promised land. The promised land starts from the river Nile in Egypt all the way to the river Euphrates in Iraq. It's not that little piece of land that the Palestinians and those Edomites are fighting over, call themselves Israelis. Today they call it the state of Israel. That's just part of the promised land. That's going to be the, the promised land is from the river Nile to the river Euphrates. But we're going to rule over the whole earth. The morning stars, Yahweh Shai. So it says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Revelations chapter 3. Jump down here. Chapter 3, verse 21. It says again. Chapter verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, how are you going to hear his voice? To what we are teaching. Because it's ultimately it's the Lord that's going to make you hear this, what we are teaching. We are his servants. But it's the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai, that will wake you, remove the veil, that will draw you to this truth. That's why it says, behold, I stand at the door 
and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And this is how it's, it's going to happen. If the Lord wakes you up to this truth, that's when you're going to be sitting there and supping with the Lord and him with you. If he removes the veil from your eyes, the stumbling block from in front of you, if he delivers you out of those churches, out of Islam, out of any of those mad religions, out of the political systems, if he delivers you to hear this word, what we are teaching, then you actually will be supping with the Lord. You would have opened that door because the Lord would have knocked on your door. But he's got a knock on your door. All we can do is teach this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. But he is the one, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's going to knock at your door, that's going to wake you up to this truth. To him that overcometh, which is all the lies, treachery and hypocrisy of this world, right? all the wickedness, him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. That's the kingdom that's coming. Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. When did the Lord overcome? After he was crucified. He had to go for everything. He was whipped. He was tortured. He was brutalized. He was incarcerated. He was humiliated. And then they crucified him. But he overcame. He overcame. Give all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Bashim, Kadash. He overcame. So we must remember what our Lord went through to become our Savior, to become our deliverer. Remember what the Lord went through to become the deliverer of these people, not of the world, but of the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. He did it for these people, not for anyone else. He wasn't humiliated, he wasn't tortured. Um, incarcerated, crucified for any other nation but this nation here, the 12 tribes of Israel. So we must try to remember that. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to finish it there. I was bringing a few more scriptures, but I don't need to. I pray this was an edifying lesson to all of the brothers and sisters that tune in live. For those of you that may tune in later, like I said, I'm going to upload this up on my other channel first. Because they blocked me from uploading my videos to my normal channel, Hebrew Israel Yochanan. So I'm going to upload it on my other channel, which is called Judah Israel. And to continue preaching the word until I get access back to my normal channel, which they said I'm being banned for seven days. But like I said, I leave it all in the hands of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. He's given me another vehicle to bring this word out until the door opens again for me to go back onto my normal channel. So I pray this was an edifying lesson to all the provinces that tune in live and for all of the Israelites that are waking up to this truth in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, who the Lord has, has knocked on their door for them to open the door to him, which is this truth. We give all praises and glory to our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rekha Kodash Tawada, until we meet again, Shalom. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters.